Well hello good people. Today I wanted to show you RPG Go. It's a platform where you can create text-based RPG games. But if we take a look at the screen here, you see that as we scroll down, there are several categories for the RPG games that are already made. Love, mm -hmm. RPG, D&D style, anime. So you can go ahead and just click play on any one of these and start a game. I created a game here. It's called Chronicles of the Dracon, the Alantia Conquest. It's not finished yet if I click on it here. And basically the way this works is you have your chapter summary here. My character is named Kael and I run into my first character here. Her name is Lyra and she says, Stranger, you wandered far into the sacred woods. Speak your purpose or the moon may not favor your presence here. And I'll say something like, huh, where the heck am I? <laughs> we just enter that into the text field and then we start our conversation. Now we see her response here and I have it set up where I have multiple choices. Now I will point out right away, the chat feature is free at the time of recording this video. However, if you choose to use the voice speech or the image generation, that's what will cost some credits. So if you're totally fine just doing chat, it's totally free. So I'm going to click on this little icon here and I'm going to click on image streaming NPC voice. Then you'll see the usage credits go down as we chat along. So I'm just going to respond here and I'll just say something like, I don't remember what happened to me. Do you mind helping me find my way? And then when she responds, we should see an image and hear the voice memo as well. Now to trigger the voice, you need to click on the icon. Close your eyes and breathe deeply. Allow the whispers of Elantia to stir within you. As she speaks, Lyra raises her hands and a delicate glow emanates from her fingertips. And you can also trigger the image generation here. For whatever reason, mine failed. I'll try it again later on. But basically that's how it works. Now to create your game is actually very easy. Go to the top and select create. And you have three main options here. Create a game, create a new character, and build modules. You'll need all three of these to create a game. Now you could start from a template that's already made. So if you want a quick way to generate a game, let's say based on a D and d game you can simply click this click on use template and then tweak the information your characters based on your own personal preferences now i'm not going to do a deep dive as i normally do because i am still experimenting with this but let's create a new game from scratch and i'm going to close this window for now this is basically just where we can see an example of what we're creating so i'm going to close it from this hamburger menu and then you just have to fill in information here and follow the steps. So the first part is to describe the worldview. Oh, and by the way, while you're creating your game, you might want to go up here and select only you so that it's private. You can always publish it after you're done. And if you're new to this, you can kind of use this as a starting point. It says here, give me a world with a mix of myths and legends from Greek mythology. So in the prompt, I put Joel as boy who went to sleep only to awaken as a shrunk version of himself and the world and his surroundings were all 20 times his size. Kind of a modern day version of honey I shrunk the kids but more like mommy I woke up small. <laughs> Whatever you decide to do click on generate. It's only going to take a few seconds and then you'll get this nice cool little overview. So the world name is Gigantica, worldview and world genre. I'm not going to read through all this stuff. But it does reference Alice in Wonderland and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, ironically. And then there's other world knowledge details down here. You can go ahead and click OK and it's going to feed all of that into the fields here accordingly. Obviously, you can go in here and tweak it manually or regenerate if you're not happy. Next, we can skip over to character. And this is where you want to start creating your NPCs, supporting characters. Currently, there's no personas for you. However, I do know they're working on it and it'll be released very, very soon. You could, once again, just create a prompt here and let the AI do it for you. Or you could manually put in specific details here. For the sake of time, I'm just going to use the AI and prompt for it. And I'm going to do something simple, an ant-like creature who's not the sharpest ant, but loyal and funny. So let's generate that. 
Once again, you're going to get a summary of this character. So character's name is Ghibli, pronouns it, and then your backstory, so on and so forth. I'm just going to click OK, and then it's going to copy all that information here. Just like before, we can go in here manually, add or subtract details. And then here you can select the voice selection. So let's say we make him a teenager. Ethan is a young high school student with a clear enunciation and a medium pitched voice. You can always change that after the fact as well. There are also selections for gestures, emojis, totally up to you what you want to do. We'll go over modules, but I'm going to save that for my very detailed tutorial. But basically this can enhance character traits. You can also generate what the character will look like right here. And it's going to be based on the description here. So you can manipulate this any which way you want. I believe they're using Stable Diffusion or SDXL. I don't know the exact model I can ask. But anyway, if you click on this, you'll be brought into this screen and you can actually even upload your own avatar if you have one. But I'm going to go ahead and click generate and see what it generates. <laughs> it's kind of scary looking, but again, you can tweak the description. I'm just going to use it for now. Once you're happy with your NPC, now click on info. And this is kind of just the overall general information of the game, the game name, game mechanics, tags, game intro, that type of thing. So I put in make the game fun and lighthearted for all ages. Can I click on generate, get a summary and click OK. And then it's going to load all that info here. Under game mechanics, you can select the type of game, adventure, RPG with NPCs, mystery, simulation, so on and so forth. And then you have an option here for game tags. We can select like JRPG, fantasy. There's an intro section here. And then the reply mode gives you single chat or group chat. And then open speech mode, you have options for private mode. Only the NPC that the player is talking to receives the chat message. So the discussion is private. If it's public mode, all the NPCs are aware of each other's dialogue in the chat room. So this may vary based on the kind of game you're playing. Here you can create a game poster and base it on three styles, comics, anime, or pixel. I'm going to leave it on comics. And we'll go ahead and generate. And again, the generated image will be based on the worldview description. So it created something like this with some giant mushrooms and there's a few cats in there. I don't know why. If you like it, you can go ahead and click use this. And then the last part is to create your chapters. Now, if you've made multiple NPCs, you can select them here and add them to particular chapters. So let's say your first interaction is with one NPC, but in chapter two, you can use two or three NPCs in a specific chapter. And then we can prompt what this particular chapter is about, or we can manually put it in. Here I have my character Joel wandering into the backyard. He gets lost and he has to find his way back into the house. So we'll generate that. We see our little summary here. We're going to go ahead and click OK. So we have the prologue here. You can create the opening line here if you don't like the one that the AI generated. You can add more dialogue. And then you could even create goals and conditions and you could even create a failed state. So let's say you have 10 rounds and hit points. If you add that to your game, just to make it more interesting. And then we have the ending state here, which is important for you to move on to the next chapter. Now, if you click on this drop down here, advanced, this is where you could set your goal displayed to the player. There's a task list area here as well. And then you have your game fail conditions. You can assign it to the game, the player, all characters or a specific character. And then you can just put in the factors here. Now at any time you can go ahead and add a chapter here. You can go back to your character area and then we can create another NPC at any time or tweak the worldview, so on and so forth. But once you're done, click on post. Again, because we made this private, it's only visible to you at the moment. And then we can just review how it looks, how the conversation's going. And in case you don't see the text box to enter your chat, you can just click on the refresh button here. So let's close this for now. I'll just put a silly response here. What the heck happened? Who are you? What are you? <laughs> enter that response. 
and then we see Ghibli's answer here. Let's go ahead and try the image generation again and you see it here but you only have I think it's 10 seconds to see it and then it's gonna disappear. It'd be nice if they left it and then you can just collapse it or whatever. But that's a quick rundown of RPG Go. Very soon you'll be able to create a 2D AI world. But as you see here, you can generate a map for the game. And it looks very much like the early Zelda Final Fantasy RPG games. And you'll see right here, create a persona for yourself. This is something that many users have been asking for. So definitely very excited to try this out when it finally launches. Lastly, I want to thank our friends over at RPG Go. Everything you need will be linked in the description below. Full transparency, I am affiliated with them. Again, the chat base system is free, but if you want to use the other features, you do have to buy some credits. It's very affordable and super fun to play with, so it looks like you can even build structures. That's super cool. As always, my friends, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any questions, head on over to their Discord server. Until that next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.